virtual people. Welcome to episode 64 of VCR Redux, where we take your favorite franchises out of the analog era and bring them back to 2022. I'm your host, pop culture punk Chris Styles, joined as always by my tri house with the most. Oh, Mickey, you're so fine, Mr. Mickey Torres. What's up, everyone? And we have two radical guests on the show tonight. First up, she runs an audio and post-production studio where she's produced dozens of special edition DVDs and Blu-rays. The producer of the upcoming Angela the Sleepaway Camp documentary, Melanie Mullen, is on the show. Hi, everyone. What's up? Also back after a long time away from the VCR, coming to you all the way from the city of brotherly love, where he's about to launch his interview show, Still Fabulous, Bobby Masters on the show. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on today, guys. We are here today to pop up some post-its, flash out our flip phones, and VCR with twice the taste and half the time for the gal on the go. That's right. This world only needs one thing, and that thing is Romeo and Michelle 2, Bogus Journey. But before we can tell Toby to fuck off, we need to talk about how Romeo and Michelle came into our lives and what we love about it. And that means it's time for you guys at home to dish on how it came into your lives. We talk in VHS, laser, cable, theaters. Hit us up in the live chat and let us know. So, Bobby, Melanie, whoever wants to go first, do you guys remember the first time you watched Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion? I mean, not specifically the first time, um, but I do remember, I'm pretty sure the first time I saw it was I rented it from probably Blockbuster because I was like 10 when it came out. So, um, so this is like... This is like middle school Melanie, you know, grade school Melanie, VHS rental. <laughs> fifth, yeah. grade, fifth grade Melanie. Yeah. And then I, I owned it on VHS for, you know, years and years and years. And I've seen it many times. I mean, I told you I rewatched it this morning, even though I was like, I don't need to rewatch it. <laughs> but yeah. I did. I did anyway because it had been a while. So. It's one of those movies that like you just never get sick of, you know, if it's on no, cable, if it's it. on, you know. Amazing. You're never not down. It falls into that very rare, uh, like '90s elite. Like, don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. A few other, you know, Empire Records. Yeah. You're just like always down to watch it. Yeah. Um, Bobby, do you remember the first time you watched it? Um, I don't actually. I kind of just like remember Romeo and Michelle just like always being a part of my life. Honestly, <laughs> it's just kind of always been there. But it was probably like like on cable in the late '90s the first time I saw it but like I said like it's always just kind of like felt like home in a sense do you know what I mean oh definitely yeah and like I you could... said like I never get tired of it like if it's on I'm just like okay this will do I definitely have movies I can vividly remember the first time seeing um Romeo and Michelle but we'll get to that in a sec but I definitely have movies um that are so ingrained in my life I have no memory at all of the first time watching like Back to the Future and Karate Kid and things that like you know, as a toddler replaying, like learning yeah. how the VCR works so I can watch it back to back to back. Um, but at any rate, uh, Mickey, I'm guessing you were on a date with a couple of chicks. Um, this is 97. Gonna say, so. I was going to say the same thing. Tell us about the date you were on. Yes. I did Tell see us. it in the theaters. I did see it in the theaters. Okay. And I did, I, I saw it with an ex, you know, but, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but okay. I mean, I saw it in the theaters. And I, I mean, I, I, I want, like, I remember, like, the trailer coming out and everything else like that. And just going, like, I got to watch this movie. I mean, like, anything, like, 80s related, you know, basically had me in and had me from, like, jump. So, and Mira Sorvino. Oh, come on. I had the hugest crush on Mira Sorvino. I could definitely relate to that. I feel like this is one of those movies where I'm just totally in love with both of them. And, you know, um, they are just one of the greatest duos ever, you know, in the history of like Beavis and Butthead and Bill and Ted, I feel like Romeo and Michelle are on that Mount Rushmore of all time great duos. Uh, but we'll, you know, heroes actually that you mention it because like they should be in that category where everybody always just immediately thinks of them as like the like the duo, to, the go to duo. And it's funny because all these other people are in these like franchise, you know, movies that go on and on and on, sequel after sequel. They did this one little quirky movie in the 90s about a high school reunion, which is not really like a guaranteed blockbuster formula. It's not like it's die hard on a reunion, you know, or something like that. But um, this is one of those movies that just kind of cult wise lives on. And, 
also kicked off, like you mentioned, Mickey, 80s nostalgia in a very big way. Um, it, to a for point sure. now where we've literally been on 80s nostalgia mode for decades, and I am all here for it. Um, but I will get to my first time seeing it in a sec. I do want to say hi to some people in the live chat, though. I see all the way up at the top of the live chat, uh, Mr. Adon Gonzalez of Staunch TV, um, who mentions that he covered the prequel as well he did. Um, for those that don't know, there was a prequel series, uh, Romeo and Michelle in the beginning with Catherine Heigl, I think yeah. around 2005, it was an ABC mm -hmm. family show ABC before, family. They, yeah. before they morphed into Freeform. <laughs> Freeform, yeah. <laughs> I never, so I never saw the prequel, even though I should, but I kind of don't want to, but I was going through the IMDb for that today and saw that Rhea Seahorn from Better Call Saul was in it. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't even yeah. Know. There are some interesting um, cameos in the, the movie as well. There's some people, like one of the A-listers is Pam from True Blood. And I never caught that until like today. I was like, oh my God, shit, that is Pam from True Blood. Yes, um, I do that remember, was... I do remember, but only after like watching True Blood did I rem like when I saw her, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I, I instantly remembered her from, from being on the, in, in Romeo and Michelle. I always well, uh, think of Elaine Hendricks from The Parent Trap. Oh, yeah. Great. As Lisa oh, Luter. Gosh. That's yes. right. I know. I never saw The Parent Trap. You're talking about the uh, Lindsay oh, Lohan. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, honestly, it's, I don't think I've ever seen good. any of The Parent Traps. I know, chat. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, I they're should both, watch they're them. They're both good. They're both good. I, I, I didn't see The Lohan Parent Trap. was very time. well done. It was very okay. well done. Well, at any rate, um, the prequel itself to Romy and Michelle, whether it's deemed worthy of seeing or not, uh, is not mine to judge because I haven't seen it. But if you're curious and want to know about it, definitely head over to Staunch TV because that is just, in general, the best 90s nostalgia comfort channel you can possibly find on YouTube, cranking out hit after hit. Uh, I've, I must have watched their entire catalog. Uh, but again, we love you, Staunch. We, uh, you know, we should have gotten you on this episode, too um thank you for tuning in uh also jeremy leverett in there compliments on the shirt thanks buddy um i see um some love for romeo and michelle ian clink the although in the chat say calling this the worst movie ever um but we're also very glad you could be with us even though uh you're not a fan and you obviously have horrible taste in shirts and movies but uh it's no gas station pizza what can we do uh, although he does he is kind enough to share with us his first time watching it uh says it was VHS from Movie to Go in Eldridge, Iowa. Worst night of his life. Uh, if that's the worst night of your life, you lived the most amazingly coddled existence I've ever heard of, <laughs> and we should be celebrating that. Um, also, yeah. Gold Code in the chat. Um, glad I, I know he's not uh, the biggest Romeo and Michelle fan, but I'm glad he could tune in as well. Um, Kyle Camper calling Ian out as the resident hater in the chat. Uh, again, chat is already active as well as I see Melanie Mullen <laughs> doing her usual double yes. bill of being in the chat and on the I show. Can't, I can't help it. You're the only one in VCR history, and I love you for it. So, again, thank I you can't guys help so it. much. I see a Angie Saunders in the chat, the mashup genius herself. Um, so the chat is fully loaded tonight. Much like the theater was the first night I saw Romeo and Michelle's high school reunion. Um, ah, I was so you down. saw it in the theaters too. I did see it in the theaters. Although unlike you, Mickey, who was on a date, I was with my fucking parents and my best friend, Steve, <laughs> who is the Romeo to my Michelle, the tango to my cash, the bill to my Ted. Um, and ironically, we live together now. So we didn't wind up in L.A. We wound up in New Jersey. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like it's very, um, very fitting that things worked out the way they did for me. Um, but no, I just love this movie instantly. One of those films that I rented as soon as it came out, like, you know, rental release day and instantly made a copy of it with my camcorder. And I used to I had this weird rig where I would run like a video output from my camcorder and it somehow didn't have the copy protection thing so I could get like good dupes of movies. Um, but it's one of those movies I copied from Blockbuster. I know um, that's wrong. Piracy is wrong, folks. But um, I had this little like handwritten VHS copy of it forever that I probably rocked until the wheels fell off. And sadly, didn't upgrade to on disc until today. My Blu-ray actually came in the mail. Uh, even though I watched the movie on Tubi like a week ago, <laughs> I was like, well... You know, I really need this Blu-ray. Is it on Tubi right now? 
I was yeah. Tubi or Pluto, one of those. One of them. I don't know. I, hey, one I, one of bought, I bought it on Amazon Prime. I mean, it was four dollars, but still. Four dollars. I mean, that is some of the best four dollars you could spend. I'm happy to give. Purchase. I'm happy to give them the money because I love that movie. So yeah, I mean, we gotta you gotta support it too. I mean, like there is the rumor that they are gonna do the sequel, mm-hmm. which is but, kind like, of so, sort of what inspired the episode here, of course. Yeah. So you know? more, more, more love for this movie is the closer we get to the actual sequel. Exactly. I figure, you know, if it takes us speaking it into existence, hey, crazier things have happened, folks. Um, so I think they're actually doing well, we didn't do, but yeah. Rambles. Anyway, um, so Romeo Michelle, it's one of those movies that obviously it's tough to pick a single quote, but if you had to, what are the first quotes that come to mind when you think oh, this movie? Obviously, the first thing for me is Toby, fuck off. Yeah. Actually, I have been trying this new fat-free diet I invented for the last six days. I haven't eaten anything but gummy bears, jelly beans, and candy corn. God, <laughs> I wish I had, I had your <laughs> discipline. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so perfect. Um, it's such it's... a quotable movie. It like it really has so many good zingers and one-liners. I, yeah. I love. Uh... Well, I hope your babies look like monkeys. Let's go, <laughs> Romy. I love the uh, the Ramon scene. Oh, Ramon. Oh, God, oh yes. Ramon. <laughs> Is that an earthquake? No. No, it's, it's Ramon. Ramon. <laughs> Come on, Ramon. Quit jerking off and bring the car around. <laughs> <laughs> this is also sneakily, um, I feel like, one of Janine Garofalo's best roles ever. She's like, so it's just good. so yeah. tailor-made for her. The fact I that she—I like, don't see her as anybody else but Heather Mooney. In all the things I've seen her in, she's still Heather Mooney to me, and I love it that way. The fact that she ends up developing the bur- the fast burning cigarettes. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's so brilliant. Janine Garoppolo. Uh, sorry. Twice and the I, flavor and half the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah twice. And yeah. Twice the taste and half the time. I wonder what they again. used. I wonder what they used for that cigarette because you saw a close up of it burning down real fast, but it looked like such a like delicate cigarette you know probably like paper mache or something yeah it was probably just yeah filled with like yeah filled very loose or something you know so it would just burn right down i'm sure there were tricks um but i feel like that's also something back when i was a smoker i was like god damn it i would have loved that (laughs) i would have gotten two cigarettes a smoke break um from my crappy menial jobs um but melly did you have a favorite line or a favorite quote i have many um so the one I probably use the most is if anyone's got to make a call, I've got a phone. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Yeah, yeah. That is I've so got a good. Phone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the Ramon stuff is great. Um, businesswoman special is like. <laughs> Do you have a businesswoman special? Or like, you know, <laughs> businesswomen? <laughs> <That's my laughs> oh. Yeah. Business so, one special uh, is like my favorite scene in that movie, probably. So Mira Sorvino made a very interesting choice with her voice in this movie. She does like <laughs> this very yeah. weird character voice. And it's I it, I didn't really pick up on it that much at the time, but now I watch it, I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. Like I, I she could say anything and it becomes ten times funnier. Like if you just said like like a businesswoman special, it's like not that funny, but she's like like a businesswoman special like she just has it this was weird like funny. it's like the californians before the yeah. californians happened yeah it's it's funny and oddly like arousing at the same time <laughs> <laughs> she does i think it's amazing and i would love to hear her talk in it like on a regular basis oh it was for so sure that like i heard her actual voice and i was just like oh because you know like in mighty aphrodite she talks like this and then in um Romy and Michelle she has like the deep like whatever you want to call that um and then like you hear her real voice is like damn like range girl is she doing voiceover and that mimic voice too oh mimic <laughs> <laughs> for a sec there I thought you were that was like a Romy and Michelle reference I was like what is she talking about the mimic oh right that fucking movie that sci-fi movie yeah, and that, that and, uh, there's and a lot the, uh, of there's a lot of mid '90s sci-fi flicks. I just have oh, not gotten around to. That's yet. a great movie, actually. I like that movie. I know I've missed some gems. I know I really need to to go back and finally watch that one, uh, just for the fact that she's in it. 
Um, but this movie is, you know, again, one of those also sneaky, like perfect casts. Not a lot of name act like actors I could, you know, tell you the names of. Of course, you have the great Alan Cummings, Alan though. Cummings. We got Janine yes. Garofalo. We got Cameron Manheim. We got um Who's Cameron like... Manheim? Toby. She was Toby. Oh, that's Toby. Okay, and, thank you. And Chris, oh, let's not forget it. Ramon was actually Snake from Airborne. Oh yeah, Jacob Vargas, of course. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the great Jacob Vargas. I can tell you who, yeah, who certain actors' names are for sure um god he is i love that we did two jacob vargas movies in very close <laughs> proximity on this show so if you're out there in the universe and you're watching we love you man um seriously such a great part of 90s movies um justin thoreau of course is the cowboy who would later go on yeah. to uh, achieve uh, m- more prominent fame than being the cowboy who uh treats uh Jenny garofalo like shit um, but God, there's just so many things I love about this movie. It's it's done with television efficiency, which makes sense because the writer, um, uh, excuse me, the director worked on The Simpsons and the writer was also had done a lot of television. The writer, Robin Schiff, also the writer of Loverboy, one of the greatest comedies ever made in its own right. 1989's Loverboy with Patrick Dempsey, Kirstie Alley, Carrie Fisher, Kate Jackson, oh, Robert Picardo. You're welcome, Ian. Um, God, yeah, I could talk about that one for days. But the movie, like Romeo and Michelle, has is maybe I'm a little bit weird. Did you guys ever thought this movie has some of the weirdest structure of any movie ever? Define weird. Why? So essentially, the second act of the movie is almost a dream. the entire second act is, is a dream. dream. Is a dream. Okay. Yeah. And then if you really break it down, it's sort of like almost a four act movie because it has so many, you know, I, I hate the way I pronounce this word, but denouement, um, there's like multiple of them, uh, things that happen after the plot is resolved. Then you have the Sandy Frank comes in, you have a the, dance number and then you, you have the, the golden gonna... girls, the golden girls, like kind of like scene. <laughs> I'm the Mary. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. That's bad. And I love old ass Alan Cummings too. Like, way to go, honey. <laughs> told her. <laughs> uh, but it's so weird. It's such a fucking weird choice. Um, although it is one of my favorite dream sequences in movie history. Um, all the little weirdness of it to like the way he flies out of the limousine, the way Toby <laughs> just pops up, like With those sneakers. Hey guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, the and fucking she sneakers. gets hit by the car, and she just flies through the air, and she's just like, "God damn it!" I hate when this <laughs> happens. Yeah, to her losing her top, like it is Sorry, a very I can't find my top. <laughs> it is so and good, and then also, yeah, the bra, you know. <laughs> And I love how it has, it also plays with the like expectations versus reality scene. Like, um, you know, Christy is a news anchor or she's a weather girl or whatever. And yeah. then in real life, she's just a mom or, you know, her mm. marriage is, you know, falling apart. I always, I gotta say this, I always hated how her name was Christy Master because that we had the same last name. And I was just like, God, like I'm associated with the mean bitch. Well, then if she married Billy Christensen, then I guess her name is Christy Christensen. Yes. Which yes. definitely sounds like a soccer mom. Christy Masters Christensen. Oh, yeah, oh she that's definitely right. She has the hyphen. She definitely has the hyphen. This movie has some great names, though, like Lisa Luter, Sandy Frank, Heather Mooney, just like character names that just roll right off the tongue. Um, Ray White and Michelle Weinberger. <laughs> Oh my god, the actor, shout out to the actor that plays Billy too, because I feel like he does several, he does kind of a lot with that character, it's a pretty thankless, like, villainous kind of role, but when he gets to be, like, drunken beer belly, my life's over, (laughs) 28, 28 year old Billy Christensen, that is one of my favorite turns ever, oh, just so delicious. I also also love the the high school scenes, the high school scenes when, like, Lisa Kudrow had, like, the back brace. Oh my trying. god, yes. I'm like the flashbacks. One thing I never caught that okay, and this was always weird to me, but Romy is supposed or excuse me, Michelle is supposed to be chubby. No, Romy. Romy, Romy, Romy excuse me. I'm sorry. Chubby, right, yeah. yes. Romy's supposed to be chubby. I never got that. 
Um, and apparently she's wearing like a fat suit or something. I saw something on the, I read I, something on the internet about this today. I feel like at one point, I, I mean, I could be, I didn't notice it when I was watching today and I meant to look out for it. I feel like they gave her like a big ass. But... They, gave, okay. they gave her, she was definitely padded. But the thing okay. is like, I guess like in the 80s when like you're supposed to have no ass at all to be pretty that then you're considered chubby if you're like full figured in like a hot way yeah. but like then it was just like oh you have to be 96 pounds and then she <laughs> got mono <laughs> yeah it's right oh my god that was the best diet ever <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god I what love everything about this movie I love hamburger. it like what the hell was that about so that's another part that's very fucking weird and i love the weirdness of it like again my favorite quote in every movie is usually the weirdest line in the movie like and you know i always use the happy gilmore the happy look out uh like as a <laughs> reference so people know what i'm talking about but like that burger scene is probably it for this movie <laughs> that like oh can i have the rest of that and just like picks up the burger and just like they linger on that whole moment like mm, so good <laughs> she, she didn't what do you mean the rest of that christy that was a whole hamburger yeah a whole fucking burger yeah <laughs> can i have the rest of this that you didn't even take a bite out of yet <laughs> that scene always a- kind of like bothers me only because um I know for a fact that schools don't serve good hamburgers and I <laughs> yeah, got they very, don't. I got really bad food poisoning from a burger at school once so like I just kind of like picture Christy like 10 minutes later like barfing her guts out in the back <laughs> I, like, I always imagine I always imagine I school know. burgers like hospital burgers they're oh, pretty they're much so they're bad. pretty much on the par on the same <laughs> they I'll were tell you what, so bad they're exactly on the par of and I love how we're dinner and a movieing this right now but they're exactly on the par of when I would go s- snowboarding in the Midwest at these little like garbage dumps that they like, uh, pour dirt over and, and you know put snow machines on and they and they call it a mountain um, but at any rate, they would have these little ski lodges that would serve like the worst hot chocolate, the worst pizza, the worst fries, <laughs> yeah. and the worst burgers ever. They just had like a and hot every plate. time I had the burger because I was like, well, it's equally as crappy as the burger at school, whereas the rest of the shit is somehow even worse than what I get at school. But so that's exactly how crappy those school burgers are. But anyway, that's just, I don't know. I fucking just love that moment. There's something so weird about it and just so shithead. It really reminds me of like Terry Silver being like, oh, John Kreese told me you had a lot of heart. Like something I love about villains fucking with um, the heroes. But that's also like the setup. Also, I mean, like that flashback really like sets up Janine Garofalo's uh, character as well with the cowboy and everything else like that. I said you get you basically get the, the, the synopsis of who they are, who these characters are and where they're coming from, from there. Because it's basically the reunion. So then you then you go into the the weird, you know, dream sequence and the travel and all this stuff. And I don't know. This movie is just like awesome from start to finish. It's it is. And, and you can like say it's-, it's weird. You can say it's weird the setup and everything and how it plays out. That's a reali- compliment to me though. Yeah, the reality of it is is like you will you watch this and you don't like when you when you watch this, you don't for a second sit there and go like this is weird. Why would they do this? And blah, blah, blah. You just literally watch it and enjoy it from start to finish. You accept, and then, it. You accept everything that's happening. Exactly. It's it's just like you don't care. It's it's like that, you know, that that person you love because, you know, I don't understand you, but I love everything about you at the same time. So, like, you know, I think we can all relate to Michelle's like interview process and like when she goes to the like the bargain basement and they're just like someone yeah. can you oh and like, my god yeah I would like to go away that yeah. scene that scene hit different when I re when I was like rewatching the movie in my twenties. I was like, ooh, ouch. Like this is uh yeah. I'm uh yeah, I'm way more of a loser than they could ever be, just based on like straight up, you know, looks alone. But then like look at their like it's they have one of those TV apartments, right? Where like one of them has no job, the other one kind of like sort of works in, in a all car fairness, dealership. though, they share a bedroom. Like their beds are side by side. Yeah, yeah. kind of like a loft 
loft apartment. You don't really get to see the whole thing that much, but it looks like it's like a loft apartment. And it's almost like a like bosom buddies. Like if you remember that show, Bosom Buddies, it's like the same kind of concept too. It's sure? weird though. Um, like, I feel like that was a thing though. Like people would literally share a bedroom like that. Like Three's Company, Janet and Chrissy, yeah. and then Janet. Room, and roommates was literally roommates. Like you literally, <laughs> you know, lived in the same room together. It was, yeah, you know, I think that's also like one of those TV things, like people and friends having this big New York apartment. They have this big LA apartment. I can't even talk about that. I cannot even talk about that. The false advertising of like the possibility <laughs> of that not even being a thing. Yeah. Next, well, sub <laughs> next subject. Well, getting back to the Mary and Rhoda business, um, I will say it's one thing, you know, my my buddy Steve is like, you know, the Romeo and my Michelle, like I said, or the Michelle and my Romeo, however you want to look at it. We didn't argue who's the Mary and who's the Rhoda. We argue, and this is so hilariously embarrassing, but we argue who's the Dawson and who's the Pacey. Um, and we both think we both want to be the Pacey, of course, in that well, scenario. Yeah. No one wants to be the main guy. We both want to be the side guy. And I think that sort of defines our friendship, which is kind of cute and really nice. So shout out to Steve. He's been on the show a couple of times. Um, I see some people in the chat, though, that I don't normally see. One of them is my buddy, Anthony Ramirez, a mashup genius in his own right as well. Um, some some props for Loverboy in the chat. Um, he says, Loverboy's epic comedy gold. Speaking of gold, Gold's Code says, Airborne is Chris's Citizen Kane. That's why it always comes up um some uh somebody razzing mickey in the chat uh gold's coast says they only covered it because mickey needs to stay on pro needs a reason to stay on probation um <laughs> so again if you guys in the chat have your favorite quotes or your favorite scenes or your favorite characters now is the time because in about four minutes we're going to be in pitch mode um i i, I do want to talk about how the again the director worked on the simpsons and i think that there's almost a little bit of Simpsons mentality into this show, this kind of like, what the fuck? Um, structure and rules are out the window, but they can parody things so quickly because they, they use tropes in a way that, oh God, I, don't, I feel like I'm babbling a little bit, but they use tropes, familiar tropes in a way so that the twists come, like the dream, for example, um, like you get it pretty quickly. You settle in like, okay, I get yeah. what this is, you know. Um, the limo they, has the echo. Yeah, yeah. Oh my I think God. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're able to cover a lot more ground and which is why the movie has such a weird structure. Um, it's almost like there is no three act structure, but like mm. I said, it's really almost like there's more of like a four act thing going on. And the whole um, post-it speech when she like, literally recites like how you know what it takes it's to make post-its yeah, maybe. Yep. maybe just maybe i could increase the viscosity by adding a glucose-based derivative during the emulsification process and it turns out i was right <laughs> <laughs> and, she's and she's telling Romy about the dream and she's like and i knew the formula for glue <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god that's so good i love that i actually kind of looked because i wasn't totally sure whether or not alan cummings played dream sandy as well but i guess he did he did yeah. it was prosthetics i saw yeah. like i could tell it was probably prosthetics but it was like but Weird. it was to the point where i was like is this a different actor because <laughs> but yeah i mean so they did a pretty good job of first thing i did was <laughs> treat myself to a new face <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll just say you picked a good one thanks yeah. like the way he says thanks is weird too <laughs> like he yeah. kind of has like a dead look on his face i have boxes of tissue in my car <laughs> let me make <laughs> after, it up to you after she gets hit with the limo <laughs> let, me <laughs> yeah. make it up, let me make it That's up to so you good. i have boxes of tissue in my car <laughs> I feel like honestly only the Sopranos picked up on like that style of dream scenes in movies <laughs> where like shit can be that fucking weird and make that little sense. Um, and it's, I don't know, there's something just so good. I love that whole dream sequence. Uh, God damn, I'm almost at a, at a loss for words now. Um, I guess that means it's time for pitches. Uh, you know, we're a minute early, but uh, I see Gold's Code in the chat ready to kick it off. So uh, we'll start there. Uh, Gold's Code says, pitch, Romeo and Michelle time travel back to stop the first movie and save the audience from wasting their time, but oh, inadvertently make up. the very movie they are attempting to stop. 
I love the meta nature of that Shut Sean up. Gold, but I not the cheekiness of it, my friend. Um, points <laughs> uh, points to you for adding time travel, though, because damn, do I have a soft spot for that. Um, so I will say it's a very tough it's a tough pitch, right? The movie was about a high school reunion that happened. That was a 10 year reunion and the movie is 25 years old now. So what you I feel like it's kind of just a cop out to say, all right, let's do their year 35th reunion. anniversary. Like, uh, is there even such a thing as a 35th anniversary <laughs> reunion? I don't Billy think Christensen is dead. Christy Masters is fat. Yeah, I'm yeah just, right? this is like I'm roll just, the clock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I mean, you ended off like Andy were, Frank is Elon Musk. They were working at the store. They were they had their own store. Correct. Right. So I, I feel like, you know, like the natural inclination would, would be like they are like fashion icons now. Like they're yeah. literally yeah. like that's that you you have nowhere to go. But there, you know, like as far as that goes, Janine is obviously she still has the burning cigarettes. But I feel like nowadays it would be some form of vape. Yeah, it would be some yeah. form of vape and some for rolling papers or something, you know. So, like, I feel like that's where you would go there. Ramon, I feel like, is still in the picture. <laughs> I, think so. I, I think she had a soft spot for Ramon. Yeah, I mean, I Rowan think she did. Did. Ramon <laughs> could be her Sandy yet. Frank. Yeah, that? that could be an interesting angle to play because, I mean, at the end of the movie, you also assume that sandy and uh romy are going to be together yeah. um, michelle michelle, michelle. Good Lord, michelle. why do i keep doing that sammy right. yeah uh oh uh oh oh god oh no oh god oh no okay well, you know. almost that oh, skippy you. that urkel you froze, just saying, you, you froze for, like, for a, a moment chunk of time oh okay well yeah. i was i was rambling on anyways i'm sure it wasn't uh <laughs> I'm sure we didn't miss anything at home, folks. Um, so what do we not want to see in a sequel? Like, how do we, like, what, I mean, you know. I want again, no kids. Well. I want no kids. Yeah. I don't want, I don't, I don't, I don't want them to have kids. I agree. No way. No yeah. kids. No Agreed. second generation Romy Michelle. No passing the baton. None of that stuff. I want strictly Romy and Michelle after, you know, the, the, the reunion now they're a success like now they've finally got success they're in the fashion industry they're like fashion icons i want the focus to be on them and i want them like to go back you know to go back and and see some of these people like maybe they have like you know you talk about like you know returning to your to your hometown getting the keys to the city maybe somehow they get the keys to the city do they so like, the keys, the keys keys yeah it's like it's Romy and michelle day and like whatever like that well well now you touched on something important and i do want to say that i love how the movie um shines a little bit of love on the tucson arizona where yeah. many many great 80s movies were filmed and i think it's very mm -hmm. fitting that this movie which was sort of about you know sort of declaring 80s nostalgia is like here to stay um and it does so again flawlessly with a great soundtrack while even throwing some 90s hits in there as well um i just always love that that they go to tucson that's where just one of the guys was filmed that's where camp army love was filmed i mean that's where some of the fucking great 80s comedies actually actually oh oh please yes red pen just, i'm, just I'm here for the, it just one of the guys was filmed in uh phoenix okay mm. Uh, that's right but it's arizona nonetheless and god damn it the spirit I mean, of it it's is an all hour there. and a half away it's uh, fine it's doable. What, if, what if what all if arizona looks the same it's what fine. if romeo and michelle like you know they they donate to the school or something like that like the school's in jeopardy of you oh. know getting you know demolished or closed down or whatever like that they wouldn't they, give a shit they hated that i was gonna say they, that. they, they, they hated <laughs> They hated the school, but at the same time, like it would be like, you know, they always craved for that recognition from their town. Um, yeah, I mean, no, no. you may be onto something there for sure. Um, it's tough, you know. I think, well, obviously, we all wish we got this sequel in like 1998 or 1999 or, you know, somewhere within like a reasonable time frame. But, you know, again, no matter how you slice it, 
the movie you have to boldly go into fresh territory because you can't it can't be about another reunion like even if it was like the 25th anniversary of their company that could only really be like an inciting yeah. incident kind of moment um, it could have also like moved on to being like uh costume designers for like lady gaga and stuff like that you can have a lot of like cameos here too yeah and it's la too so that all yep. makes perfect sense yeah um, you don't want it to be like too forced so especially because yeah like the first one didn't have any cameos or anything like that so yeah. you don't mm-hmm. want it to to deviate too much you know well, you want you want it to grow like with the time that has passed but at the same time you don't want to like overload it with like stunt casting either yeah the first, but the thing is like the first one like they went into that like no expectations being like oh this isn't gonna be anything and then it turned out to be a smash hit so now there's like a lot of expectations for it to like you know top what it was which is going to be like pretty damn near impossible fair enough um you know i'm sorry i got a little distracted there i see a uh, new name in the chat uh brad saying you'll never get an incorrect filming location past melanie touche brad <laughs> appreciate you tuning in and well put, brad, is, brad is actually one of my best friends <laughs> oh, and apparently I missed the pitch from Angie Saunders uh, in here. Okay, Angie Saunders said Romeo and Michelle have another reunion. Okay, I'm sorry we were track talking trash on your pitch there, and but accidentally, Angie, uh, we love you and, th- and thank you for tuning in. Um, so I think a reunion could have something to do with it, but I don't know. It, it's like one of those things. It, it's like when you wait this that long to do a sequel, you either you know you either get Uh, like a top gun maverick and you know lightning strikes twice or you have a zoolander 2 or a sin city 2 that just like totally bomb i just thought i just thought about my gosh i just thought about something we can have a wedding whose wedding sandy and uh romy and uh michelle it's been so long though and but, also, I really think Sandy's gay by now. <laughs> like, no. really, you guys, come on, seriously. No. Honestly, well, okay. I mean, here's the thing. Because, uh, like, you know, Sandy it feels like kind of a consolation prize for Michelle, right? Like, yeah, it's great that he helped them start this store and gave him some startup money and shit. Like, but romantically, Was like, I, I thought they were m- romantically like kind of into each other. I thought they were cute at the they end. Were like, cute. He was... we love Alan yeah. Cummings, but like, she, you know. But it was like, oh, you're ri- you're yeah. rich now. That was, yeah, kind like, of was, yeah. Like you're rich now, yeah. but but, but uh, and here's how I try to justify that. But he also exudes a confidence now that he didn't have in high school and that makes a big difference of course of yeah course. that of makes course. a really big difference he's also kind and it of wasn't like I mean, she doesn't he's not hiding behind his notebook anymore yeah. and like, it wasn't no, like hiding. she was like grossed like, I, out by him she was never yeah. grossed out by him to be so. fair though he does hide a little bit behind his whole spiel about like well i guess if you could find success as a uh, mansion in malibu a penthouse in new york <laughs> a house in acapulco another one in uh, bel-air and uh private jet a personal yeah. trainer and live in well, masseuse and uh just, you know staff of 24 then yeah i guess i've been pretty successful humble brag there you know that is what i'm calling like disposable income right <laughs> he shows up and he's super confident he has his big dick energy he's not hiding behind his friggin' notebook anymore he's like i've got a boner for you michelle and <laughs> And you know who's got, got your that name on it. I'm not for and it's got your name on it. <laughs> to hide it this time. No yeah, exactly. And you know who spots that bullshit right away is Heather Mooney. Janine Garofalo is like Sandy Frank. What the hell was I thinking? I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I absolutely love that. And I love that she gets with the cowboy. Like I, you know, everyone sort of gets a mini oh, happy oh, ending to this. Yeah. Everyone who deserves a happy ending gets yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, everyone yeah, deserves yeah. it. Oh my god, and the people who don't, and then like um Christy, her pregnant belly is exposed and she's wearing <laughs> the granny panties. Yeah. And great yeah, yeah. prosthetics on everyone. Again, you can tell it's not real, but it's still like, you know, looks very passable, even in HD. The pregnant belly, um, Billy's beer gut, 
um mm -hmm. the old age makeup and stuff um even they had to do like the weird billy jr things so, like i don't know what age he's supposed to be um sure. which is a kind of a great fake out moment um god but again you know i just ramble on and on about the first movie forever so how do you roll it forward i mean what's interesting to see i mean honestly i don't see michelle and sandy still being together i think they're good friends but like i don't think it worked i don't think he's i don't think sandy's the love of michelle's life yeah I like I, you, I say yes i right. say yes you, you say yes happening now i say they're together i say they're together i think they're together too and because they're married now she didn't have they didn't have to pay him back for the money he loaned them for the story. exactly i don't exactly. think that would have been a problem either way but i By like that twist they were able to pay him back because it's been this long well i'm sure he gets a cut now like now like you know they're 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 equal partners basically or or he's you know a partner in it or whatever the case may be and, I, and again i, I want to go to the point where now they've they're like like i said fashion icons they're they're designing for for celebrities or whatever they're, they're you know they're doing their thing now so you know i i feel like that's the way to move it especially like you want to like have that you know woman empowerment like you don't want it to be like sandy you know forked over the money and that's the only reason why they're successful this and that True. you want them to have developed their own money and have gone on to do their own thing you know sandy helped in the beginning but sandy is no yeah. longer their benefactor so to speak right they are now the business yeah. women that they wanted to be they're now like in charge they have maybe you know multiple stores whatever the case may be you want them you want to see them you know at the top well so here's to all i'm saying right and i agree I with everything you said i have a pitch i have a pitch okay all right, all right bobby's got a pitch please please all right maybe like their brand is like in danger of going under and they need to save it i mean that's definitely um that definitely works in terms of, you know, driving the plot and again, creating conflict between the two of them because you always have to have that uh, breakdown yeah, scene where they, they get pissed at each other on, and go their separate ways. They might mm. not agree on something like there could be like bankruptcy at state, like they could be successful, but like something could happen to where yeah. like their brand is in jeopardy and they need to fix it. And then like, yeah, yeah. Plan, that's cool. I mean, happens again, and then the reality comes back. Yeah, and then they have to go I mean, back yeah, to their roots. Take them, yeah, so they have to go back to their, again, you know, yeah. yeah, they have to go back to the roots. Like, they have what to am... contact old people. Like, they have to call Sandy Frank up. Heather Mooney comes back in the mix. And now, here's the thing: like, if if you're doing something like, and nowadays or whatever the case may be, like, what's old is is new again. I mean, '90s fashion is still is back again. So, like, you right. literally like it could be something where they they went too far with the fashion. And again, you know, that breakdown, whatever, they're failing, whatever the case may be. And they have to kind of go back to, you know, how they used to dress back in the days or whatever the case may be. And that starts up the business again, something like that. I think, I mean, I love, I love all that. And I would kind of, I would do that, but I would do it from this angle. Um, but before I actually even get to that, um, I, I see a pitch in the chat and I don't want to forget about it. Again, Anthony Ramirez a dub 9099 on instagram uh it says uh, his pitch is they're framed for murder have to go to prison new roommates for the first time in their lives and they have to solve the mystery of how they were framed scooby-doo style that's not half bad at all and i would fucking see that i love all those women behind bars movies can Cage you imagine Romy and michelle behind bars that would, would be, be fucking, fucking amazing. awesome that Romy would be a michelle great scene broke down palace <laughs> <laughs> that would be Rome a great scene um as to as to or a great you know you know movie in, in its own right um as to what you were saying as to how, how i would do that angle i would want to see them successful at this point in their lives and i would probably oh, want to see too. them still single because honestly i feel like there's no romantic relationship that we're gonna be more invested in than the relationship they have with each other and i'm not saying they need to be romantically involved with each other but you that's kind of you, the first movie is almost treated like that you know best that's sort of the way these like best friend movie stories work that like you almost treat that like it's your a love story um mm -hmm. the friendship and i think as long as you keep that going you can do a lot of different things with the sequel and what i would do is again thinking of them as these great duos i've always loved that bill and ted's sequel 
is essentially Bill and Ted go to hell. You know, there's very little mm-hmm. time travel in the entire movie and you kill your lead characters two minutes in and they're also the heroes are now the villains. Like it just throws like every rule into chaos. And like, how could you do that with Romeo and Michelle? That's sort of like what gets me excited about thinking about it. And again, I know the original writer is working on this now anyway, so they're probably going to come up with something really great. Uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. But, you know, we're going to try and speak some cool, you know, tweaks into existence here. Um, so how do you do Romy and Michelle go to hell? Like, what is their idea of their personal hell? Um, you it know, it have to be jail or it have to be like, you know, if, if, if you talk about like, you know, they lose everything, whatever the case may be, it's going back to Tucson. That's hell for them. It could be a road movie. Um, I could see that working too. Yeah. Um, there's like, I just feel like there's a hundred adventures that I would love to see these characters on. And of course, exploring where they are at this point. And well, they can lives. go to Vegas. They can so definitely go to Vegas. So they're 25 years older than 28. So they're 53 right now. They could go to Vegas. Fuck, that's pretty good. I mean, it's Vegas... almost like an earnest situation. Like Romeo and Michelle go to hell. Romeo and Michelle go to jail. Romeo and Michelle go to camp. So like... I feel like keeping like keeping with some of the, the themes from from the original film, like they don't need to have another reunion because they don't, it would essentially just turn into another Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. Um, but something that incorporates their past into their present. Mm. Like, yeah, you're right. Looking, yeah. Like, like uh, the idea of having to see people from their past and look back on their days in high school is what made them stop and like think about their lives and be like, we could be doing more. That's true. Yeah, you do need to call back to that. Yeah, yeah, so maybe something with a similar theme. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, their 35th high school reunion because at that point, you know, yeah. like, like, of course, you can you can incorporate something where like some of the people from the first movie show up for make an appearance for whatever reason. Like you have Cameron Mannheim, Toby, you know, show up. You have Janine Garofalo for Janine Garofalo's character also lives in L.A. Correct. So now it's she does. believable yeah. that yeah, so it's believable that uh, that she maybe they be and she's shopping in their store at the end of the first movie. So yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. very possible that they establish some some kind of friendship with her. Oh yeah, I mean they basically oh, dress her. Yeah. They dress they basically dress her. So like, I mean yeah. to, to me, always be her personal yeah. stylist. To I me, like to be... think that they still have a friendship. Like I like to think yeah. that they like build. She's yeah, a she great. Be. She's a great foil to them. And the yeah. cowboys there too. So yes, Justin Thoreau, please. To me, yeah, Heather becomes like the third member of their wolf pack, and like they're they're practically a trio from that point on. Like obviously, Romeo and Michelle are the core, and they're always going to be that for the audience. But like I always like in movies and series when they add to the team never subtract like that's just a rule for me like i think what killed a lot of great shows is like writing characters off too soon um or killing characters off too soon um and i don't know um you know like a like if they had done a ghostbusters 3 back in the day i would have loved to see rick moranis actively busting ghosts as like an equal fifth member of the team you know yeah that would have been awesome I would have seen fucking Winston treated better than he was treated in those two movies, too. I mean, shit. He always Very got true. the short of the stick. Very know? true. Winston is the Izzy Stradlin of the Ghostbusters. He's the quiet, cool one. Um, way cooler than all the other guys. But at any rate, um, so there is some more on uh, Anthony Ramirez's pitch as well. And the chat must have wiped it off the screen. Uh, where is it? Okay. Uh, back to Anthony's pitch. While in prison, Michelle is popular and Romy is not. And Romy wants to leave. Michelle wants to stay. Um <laughs> that's an interesting interesting twist uh again i could see that being played um for a significant chunk of the movie i could also see that being a great fake out dream sequence i feel like that's one thing you need to have you need to have that weird second act dream sequence um yes i feel like that's a must i i you know even though that's that can be cheesy when you know 
like the Back to the Future thing where there's always like a chase around the town square in every movie or something, you know, Karate Kid always, you know, Daniel gets his ass kicked and Miyagi saves him at the beginning of the movie, you know. Mm -hmm. Calling those beats, it, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I think in, the, you know, those cases it actually worked, but like Austin Towers, like the nipple jokes, by the time you're in the third movie, you're like, I hate this so much. The zip it, <laughs> or yeah, that's what I meant. The zip it thing, oh, yeah. long, you know. Zip it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. By the time you're in the third movie, you're like, oh, this is horrible. Like, this was the worst part about the last movie, but the rest of it was okay. So you kind of ignored it. But um, so that's crucial. Anyway, the dream sequence, I think if you could do that, prison's not a bad place to put that or bla a bad way to, to do that. Um, also, I would I like to see them in prison. Uh, I, would, I would enjoy seeing them in prison. I could make that point. Which is weird. I bet you would. Yeah, <laughs> Romeo and Michelle in Caged Heat 3 with Brigitte Nielsen. Or Chained Heat, whatever it was. I loved those movies so much when I was a kid. Um, also, another but like, you know, it, 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 I would like in like, you know, like not a, like a straight up, like, you know, hardcore prison. I want to see them in white collar prison because they're business women. So oh. <laughs> The businesswoman special has to be incorporated into the. So like maybe class. they didn't pay their taxes. Maybe like they made so much money and they, just, they didn't pay taxes. Because they didn't know how. Exactly. <laughs> and um, they, they end up in like federal white white you know white collar prison or whatever. That's not bad. Um, Tax evasion. You could have Heather be like the Polly Rocky Rocky Five effect. That like Heather was like their accountant or something like managing their shit, and it turns out she was just really bad at it, or she like went on a bender and like fucked and up, and you know, or yeah, she she was using her their money to, to like you know pro you know prosper nah. her business and her business. I would flopped. go. I wouldn't make it that malicious. I think you want to nah. make it funny. You know, you yeah. want to still like her at the end of it. Um, bad investments. Yeah, that could work. So I feel like. Without it being too fan servicey, is there a way to work in some of the A group? The A group is, is silence. Is Chrissy Masters? Because if they're in the fashion industry, then like so is she. So like right, they could be like doing like Vogue like photo oh. shoot. Lisa Luter and Heather Mooney got together. I think boom. Even though the like, cowboy, like lesbians. Yeah, why not? Or as fucking teammates on a, uh, I don't know, <laughs> on an arm wrestling movie that's a spinoff. Um, over the top two. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just spitballing ideas here. Um, I feel like the movie was sort of progressive for its time and in some ways not so progressive for its time. But um, I don't know. Maybe that's the way my mind thinks. Um, but there's lots of laughing in the chat about uh, Change Heat 3. Um, also, a pitch, also a pitch by Alex Bonaponte, uh, Romeo and Michelle 2, post-menopausal and ready to party. The title says it all. Um, all right, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, definitely didn't see that one coming, not going to lie. Um, is there another That's one That's not here? a bad angle. It's kind of like a banger sisters type of thing. Like, they're getting older and they want to, like, you know, like stay in like a young versions of themselves type of thing. Or you could say like, you know, like if you're if you're going with the like, you know, uh, Michelle's not with Sandy, Romy doesn't have anybody, whatever the case may be. They're older. They're like, you know, it's time for us to get you know, get married or get our own, you know, men or whatever the case may be. Get let's go. To, let's let's go to Vegas. Let's go and, back to AA. Hello, my name is Romy and I'm oh an alcoholic. Yeah, <laughs> show business. Great job. Yeah, he's a William Morris agent. Where'd you meet him? Oh, I love that whole scene. Um, okay. Um, so there's a great pitch in the chat also from Angie Saunders. Uh, Romy and Michelle go to space. I don't know how it works, but I'm so down for it. Oh space. my god. I well, Sandy it. can get them to space, I believe. That's yeah, true. That He's got that Elon too. Musk money. He's the Jeff you Bezos, could, Elon Musk. You could have Romeo and Michelle do the universe. If they hit a black hole, anything could happen. They'd come out at any point in space or time. Um, oh, my God. I'm just saying, Romeo and Michelle could go conquer another planet. It would be fantastic. Uh, Romeo and Michelle be... against Thanos. 
<laughs> I would be here for any of it or all of it. A Romy Michelle multiverse to make up for all the lost time. Um, I still is curious, you know, what each of their personal hells would be. Like, what would Romy Michelle? What would Romy's personal hell be versus Michelle's personal hell? Like the Easter Bunny and the um, in the well, general. I feel like, I feel like know, Romy was more adamant granny. about like succeeding. She was more like the pusher. So yeah, feel, like she was the yeah, one who was like, oh, this yeah. doesn't like, wow, they're answering that questionnaire for the reunion and Romy's like, yeah. you know, actually our lives kind of suck. And Michelle's like, huh, what do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, I'm That's having true. a great time just watching Michelle, Pretty Woman and not working and living yeah. on Venice Beach. Michelle is, is the oblivious one. She's kind of just like, what's wrong we live in california and we live together and we're best friends so like how is like what's bad about our lives so like so much would be like i mean romy would get upset at like failure at any kind of like failure any kind of like if she like sat for a moment and thought like we're not easily discouraged yeah exactly michelle's always the one that kind of has to be the positive one and like pick her back up yeah, pretty You're much. Right. Like it she's like, we're of... going into that reunion and we're gonna have a good damn time, whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. That's well, true. I mean, like she cares more about what other people think, and like maybe in the sequel you'll see her like not caring so much. She'll be in the Sandy Frank phase where she's just like, this is like who I am. Like take it or leave it. Like I'm not here to impress any of you anymore. Yeah. But she can be easily crushed too. She can be. She can start off like that, but she can be easily crushed. You know, if if something happens. Yeah. Hmm. It's tough. I just keep trying to think what you know, how to make it more personal for each of them. How to like up the stakes the most. Like, how do you get the emotional wallop out of it? Because like you're really rooting for them to you know come out of this reunion with some degree of you know, like newfound self-respect. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, um, you know, because again, I was like 14 or 13 or 12 or whatever, however the fuck old I was when this movie came out. But it was like really important to me. Um, and I'm just trying to think of what can have like the same personal stakes for them. That's the tough, I think that's like the X factor to figure out. Um, that's very tough, but. I think like what Melanie said earlier is like the fact that like they've waited this long for it to happen is going to make it kind of difficult to like yes, build. Yes, no, uh, definitely. So many years have gone by. So like so much has happened since then. So like where do you even, where do you even start? Maybe their well, brand was huge, right? Mm-hmm. Um, for about 10, 15 years and then just slowly went down to shit. So now that like their brand is basically like that discount outlet store. I like That's Walmart. Like, the guy, the guy's like, Target. I see this tie. I paid a dollar for this tie. Like, you paid a whole yeah. dollar for that. I paid a whole dollar for that. It's one of our regulars. Like, what do you think? I want to to go away. <laughs> I'd like to. I want to go away now. Oh my God, we've all been in that position. I can't tell you how many times I've just wanted to go away and voiced that opinion and not cared. <laughs> You know, I still love, I'm, I'm just kind of stuck on this Romy Michelle go to space thing now because I just think it's so brilliant. <laughs> um, obviously, you can't do that in part two. You need like a bevy of sequels and then eventually, like part four is always okay to go to space. You know? I really would love to hear them say like, you know, you know, talk to somebody and say like, yeah, uh, we, we, we found, we, we invented Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that would be pretty good. Um yeah, fuck. I thought Jeff I, Bezos started Apple Amazon. Watches. <laughs> What's that? We invented yeah. Apple Watches. <laughs> we invented iPods. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's, I mean, you can't really do that again, but you can certainly, there's got to be something similar, a similar beat to that. But you, I really, well, you know, I'm oh, really curious on what they Google come up it. with. No, you didn't. You didn't invent that because I just looked it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you who loves this movie though is Art Fry, who worked at the 3M Group um, and invented <laughs> Post-its because like millions of people are gonna remember that guy as the inventor of Post-its now versus the inventor Romy of everything else who is nameless. Yeah. 
you know, I'm curious to see if he's posted anything about them, like, ever at all. Do you have an Instagram? I, <laughs> you know, know, we should have sleuthed on this a little bit harder. Um, but I don't know. Is there anything else? I mean, we've thrown a lot in here. Is there anything else we need to see? Do we, I, f- I feel like we need, you know, just as crucial as the dream sequence was, the future part of it, I feel like was also crucial. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing that again. Um, and technically, it Romy would be and old Romy and Michelle again. Right. But technically, they did that before Bill and Ted did that. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things that they did in this movie that were, you know, a little bit before some other things. No. I think <laughs> we're in the ballpark. Um, probably, you know, some some more details to add character arc wise. But again, I like that, like, we all kind of concur that the story is really more about them than it is about, like, romances. And that could be a subplot or a driving force, like the reunion is in the first movie. But they feel yeah. like, oh, gosh, we should have kids now or something, you know. Uh, I, re- I really hope that there are no kids. kids. We didn't no, have kids. kids. no kids. And, and if there is Because then it becomes, a, look who's talking, you know. And if there is a wedding, I really hope it's in the style of the Brady sisters get married, where they just, where they have a double wedding. Yes. The yes. only way it's possible for me. Or a triple a wedding. wedding, because, you know. Oh, Janine Garofalo. Janine, yeah. 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 Or, or like you know, or they could help. They could try. To, they they could be helping her get you know, prepared for a wedding. That's gets them to Vegas because the bachelorette party is in Vegas. I think. Side note: It would be really funny if, say, Sandy and um, Sandy and Michelle broke up. That later, Sandy like had like this almost Corey Feldman kind of music career where like he just used his money and shit to like, you know, get his shit out there, but he's like kind of terrible, you know, like, I, I'm sorry. I love Corey Feldman, um, you know, his movies, but be um, careful what you say, Chris, I love Corey Feldman, uh, you know, as an actor, um, <laughs> his music is not personally my style. Um, but, um, that's not that it's bad. He's good at what he does. I'm not trying to talk shit here. But I just think it would be funny to see. He's not Alan watching, coming. Chris. He's not watching. He's I love Fell Dog. I love Fell Dog. I know you're, you respect Fell Dog. I know you're watching. Uh, come on the show. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just think it'd be hilarious to see Alan Cummings, um, you know, with his angels around him and like doing MJ kind of moves and shit. Oh, God, so I don't know. oh my god. I don't know. I love I love the idea of Michelle and Sandy still being together and you know Same he's here. super rich and he's okay. kind of like Steve Wynn almost he has he has a super fancy hotel in Vegas and yeah. he just has like pictures of Michelle <laughs> all over the place and that'd be kind of cool. Hotel actually, Michelle. Okay. That would definitely be cool. Hotel, hotel Michelle. Michelle. All right. <laughs> I'm fucking sold. That's I great. Don't... I instead, love that. instead of the Bellagio, it's the Michelio. <laughs> there's, like, there's like a, uh, they have like one of those, uh, what is it, like showgirl shows or whatever, but like mm-hmm. all the male dancers are holding books. Yeah. <laughs> holding big notebooks. It's like Magic Mike. And all the female dancers, all the female dancers have back braces. Oh, that would be oh. so cool. <gasps> So Romeo and Michelle, the musical, they actually like write a musical and like, for, like get it like, you know, to, to play. Oh boy. Romeo and Michelle awesome. take Manhattan. Yeah. Oh. You may have some potential Romeo there. Michelle um, take, you know, Paris Fashion Week or, you know. Yeah, yeah, you could do that too. Yeah, actually, like something like that sounds yeah. like it would be or New York New York Fashion Week too. New York Fashion Week. There's actually a pitch similar to that in the chat. Alex Bonafonte, Romeo and Michelle go to a sandals resort and accidentally take a nudist cruise. Uh, I'm always in favor of people taking cruises and doing cruise control iterations of <laughs> franchise sequels. Uh, everybody, just like everyone, should have a space entry. Every great franchise should have a cruise ship entry. I'm a firm believer in this. It'll uh, be good for the economy, the the cruise and vacation economy. Oh, cat cameo, yes. So we are um, a little bit past our time here, and uh, my apologies to MK2, who's patiently waiting in the background. Uh, but before we wrap it up, is there anything else, again, you know, throwing kitchen sink wise, anything that we need to see that we have not covered? Uh, the keys to making a great Roman Michelle sequel? Or we just they need have those two. Hair and black roots in the sequel. I want that. Yes. You look so good with blonde hair and black roots. <laughs> I, 
that. I used to live by that. I purposely had really dark roots. And when I, I used to have blonde hair, I would always think that to myself. <laughs> and I like that. I think that it, I think that's a look. It's definitely a look. Mm-hmm. I want them to tell someone to have a Romeo and Michelle day. That's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Have a Romeo and Michelle day. I thought that was definitely. a good one. <laughs> um, well, okay. Before we actually wrap it up, guys, is there anything y'all have got coming up that you want to let the people know about? Uh, Bobby, Melanie, Mickey, uh, shows, uh, documentaries, uh, new studios, things along those lines. Who wants to go first? Melanie, ladies um, first. Okay. Well, uh, Angela, the Sleepaway Camp, camp documentary is still um, in production and will come out someday and um (laughs) and that'll be great um and yeah i mean that's about all i have going on um didn't didn't you just open like another studio sure yeah i did um (laughs) so so basically um some colleagues and i uh we formed a new company and um so yeah so now uh the name of the company i run is primal house sound we are an audio post-production facility uh and uh yeah so if you want something mixed i guess email me (laughs) well (laughs) should be congratulations should be on your business card if you need something mixed i guess just email me (laughs) <laughs> I, yeah and just I translation am not if you want the best in the business go with the best and that's melanie so. i am not a mixer i strictly run operations but i do have the best mixers around so i can set you up with a good one there you the go george washington duke of audio post-production facilities if you want the thank best you. go with the best i love it thank you um and again thank you thank you for coming on and updating the people about the angela doc we get a lot of talk about it in the uh, uh in the live chat well Bobby, you, can, you can like oh. the facebook page i'm sorry you can like uh, the facebook no. page and we do occasionally <laughs> post updates when we remember and um yeah, it is still very much happening. It just COVID really messed that up, but it is still happening and it will come out. So can't wait. I'm sorry, I'm done talking now. No, 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 please, please. I, I'd um, like to leave now. I'd like to leave. I'd, I'd like, like to go away. From I'd like to go away now. Uh, Bobby, spotlight is on you, my friend. When can we expect some episodes of Still Fabulous? We're eagerly awaiting. It's coming. I'm sorry. It's, it's coming. So it's coming. Sorry. I'm All such right, a well. I am such a procrastinator, but um, yeah, it's it's happening. It's all happening. Well, it's like you're they gonna say be another. Life. You're gonna be another year older then, son, because you have a birthday coming up. So, uh, a happy early birthday from everyone at VCR Redux, my friend, and much Thanks. love. Um, so Mickey, uh, you recorded recently. Any tracks coming out soon? Well, we still have uh. You know, uh, Rick just laid down his guitar parts. I should be going in sometime uh, early August, second or third week in August oh, to put nice. down my guitar tracks. Oh, right on. So slowly well, but surely, drums and bass are done. It's and, like building a And uh, rhythm tracks. Like building a house. It takes time. There are stages and phases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we definitely look forward to the finished product. Anyway, you fan fans might want to come back next Wednesday at 9 p.m. and we Rochambeau our way underground for our Tremors episode. As always, if there's a particular movie or TV franchise that you want us to cover on a future episode, let us know in the comments section below. And since you're already doing that, you might as well go ahead and like, subscribe, and follow Fandom Spotlight, The Hollow Nine Network, and Pop Culture Punk. And keep your eyes and ears on the lookout for Angela Doc. And the still fabulous interview show with our own Bobby Master. Till then, back up those Betamax, rewind those laser discs, and we'll see you at the movies.